Hey guys, welcome back to the Red Playthrough. So today I'm actually going to start talking about something that's probably going to last over the next few episodes, and that's the two world wars. So first, I kind of want to set up something, and that is what are the two world wars about? Well, what are the two world wars? I am talking, of course, about World War I and World War II. Let me first check to see if I have the move, because I can't remember if the last time I taught somebody cut and don't look too much like oh yeah I did I taught Rattata I taught Benedict so first of all yeah I know I still have the Beedrill on my team and the reason why is I'll eventually switch her out I just want to see if I can play with Beedrill uh, I think it's this one damn it oh shoot did I reset it yeah I did so, oh well. So, World War I, World War II. First thing we're going to talk about is Zionism. And that is the national and political belief that Jews and Jewish culture needed their own homeland. That they needed to have their own space because people felt that Jews, in a way, were, weren't really part of society. Because Jews honestly have this notion back then that... They didn't really subscribe to everybody else's beliefs, so therefore they were different, they were the other, they were the ones that were more than likely going to try and kill you. So because of this, a lot of people felt like the Jews needed their own homeland, they needed to get away from everybody else because they were the other in that sense. And this will start coming up during this time period where you have the Zionist movement. Now we're going to start off in America and kind of set up the stage for America. So during this time period, you have a group of very wealthy businessmen known as the Robber Barons. I'm talking about J.P. Morgan, or Andrew Carnegie, uh, Rockefeller, um, who else was the other guy? But these are the guys who are really going to build up the industries. And this is, these are going to be the guys who are going to support men like Thomas Edison and the invent, uh, invention of electricity, or the discovery, whichever one you want to put it as. So... Uh, it's going to be Morgan who's going to support Edison to try and uh, oust Rockefeller because Rockefeller controls oil and then Rockefeller is going to lash out at Morgan and then you have Carnegie who owns the steel companies and these are going to be the magnates during this time period. The term robber baron is actually first used in August of 1870 in the Atlantic Monthly Magazine to describe these men because they were so powerful. I mean, these were probably the most powerful men in US history, money-wise. And then you also have, okay, so I found the names. It's Vanderbilt who built the railroads, Andrew Carnegie who built the steel industry. You have JP Morgan who is a banker and John D. Rockefeller who was the oil tycoon. And Rockefeller probably is the most interesting one of them out of them because he's a teetotaler, he doesn't drink alcohol at all. But him and Carnegie don't like each other because both of their mentors didn't like each other. Therefore, these two men didn't like each other. So every year they would kind of take jabs at each other during Christmas because Carnegie came up from nothing. He was a Scottish immigrant with no money to his name. So every year you had Rockefeller who would send him a class or paper vest which was kind of an insult towards him so in return Andrew Carnegie would send JP Rock or John D Rockefeller not JP Morgan John D Rockefeller a bottle of whiskey even though he was a total teetotaler so he never drank in his life which is actually really really funny now going back to the first of the robber barons I talked about being uh Vanderbilt who built the railroads the American railroad lines will explode after the Civil War you will have a massive building spree from 1865 there was only 35,000 miles of track but by 1900 um, there is over one one thousand one hundred and ninety two thousand five hundred and fifty six miles of track in the railroads in America. So that's only 35 years later, which is absolutely incredible because Vanderbilt's the one who really builds up the railroads. And Vanderbilt comes from nothing. Uh, he worked on the docks of New York. He was a hustler. He was a fighter. 
I use the scrap all the time. Um, I think it's this one. Dang it. I'm going to do this a million times because I don't remember the thing, so I think it's the other way. Um, or it's the one behind it, if it's on the end. So when Vanderbilt comes on the scene, he's going to consolidate the railroads. He's going to make his mass empire. He's going to change American lives altogether. And because of that, he creates the first real monopoly. He is the first robber baron. Um, I think it may be this one. Dang it. So it's the other way. All right, I will eventually get this. Um, and because of this, you're going to have major growth in economics because now you can transport goods much faster. And because of this, you're going to see uh, Vanderbilt build some of the greatest monuments to the railroad. I mean, who doesn't love Grand Central Station in New York, which was built by Vanderbilt? He built it with his own money. That's also why the University or Vanderbilt, yeah, University of Vanderbilt exists because that's money donated by Vanderbilt. Yay, I finally figured it out. <laughs> Only 400 tries later. But Vanderbilt is our first robber baron. It's going to lead to his success and he will amass over his lifetime a fortune of $100 million dollars and he will donate $1 million to start the University of uh, Vanderbilt University, which is actually really, really cool. This is also why we have our time zones. So before this, each city had their own time zone. So it may be 12 o'clock in Chicago, but say St. Louis, Missouri, it's 120. So when you have trains coming into different towns and everybody's on a different time schedule, it kind of gets confusing. So nobody knew what was going on when it came to time, causing a lot of early train crashes. I hate static sometimes. So, with these early train crashes, we will get standardized time zones November 18th, 1883. Now, we also have something come up known as the telegraph. The te telegraph is developed in the 1830s and 1840s by Samuel Morris, who will invent this and the first telegraph will be sent from Washington DC to Baltimore Maryland and the first tele in 1844 by the way and the first telegraph sent across the Atlantic will happen in 1866 which this will be huge for war because this is going to be how people are going to communicate for war this is going to be like how armies are going to be told what to do and what not to do and because of this you have a lot of different things going on and with the telegraph lines, you have them improved to where they can go under the sea. The wires aren't going to be affected by the water, which is a great thing for communication itself. Now, steel is the new king during this time period. Everything's going to start being made out of steel. And because of this, um, you have Andrew Carnegie, who is the head of the steel mills, who is from Dun... Dun... You guys are going to have to correct me on pronunciation in case I said this wrong. Done for Menlin, Scotland? Somebody correct me on that. Um, he is the king of steel, so he's going to end up with a lot of money because of the steel rise. Um, and he's also going to end up with a lot of guilt in American history because in 1899, there's something known as the Jonestown Flood where this country club that he kind of created, um, it ends up on creating this dam and because of the dam when the dam breaks it floods out this town killing a lot of people and because of this he's going to be blamed and it's known as the south fork fishing and hunting club 2,000 people will be killed in the town alone because of this uh stop missing attacks no i'm gonna get sweet by this right to watch uh quick attack Maybe not. No, that's not good. I hate that I can get paralyzed in this generation. I'm hoping my Raichu is quick. Er, no, please have quick attack. Please have quick attack. Please have quick attack. Please be fast. No, dang it. So close. Um, so sorry. Anyways, um, he will get blamed for that even though he's not there and he actually had said to improve the dams 
stability because he kind of saw this coming and he was afraid of it coming. Don't ask me why I healed them twice because I wasn't paying attention. Um, and because of that, he carries a lot of guilt and he starts doing really charitable works. I'm going to store you and you and withdraw. Withdraw you. I'm going to withdraw you. I'm going to... Let's do a training for a little bit. I tried to beat him twice, so we're going to train and train up these Pokemon. Because I feel like maybe a Nekans and a Clefable, Clefairy will be helpful for right now. So let's just go around and fight random trainers. So he will carry a lot of guilt because of that and he will start his philanthropy. And what is philanthropy? Pretty much is when somebody who's very wealthy starts giving back large amounts of money. He's the first to ever do this. And it's revolutionary because none of his other friends are. And because of this, his other friends feel like they have to. So yeah, he's the first real philanthropi philanthropist and he creates Carnegie Hall. Um, Carnegie Deli is not named after him. I wish it was, but it's not. And he's going to try and improve a lot of people's lives. He'll donate to schooling and all that. And you also have the rise in urban population, where by 1914, 80% of the UK's population lives in cities. Germany, 60%. France, 45%. And this is going to change like how the world works because before this a lot of people lived out in the country they lived in farms they were farming food but now we have technology that's going to help us with farming so we don't need as many farmers so people are going to start moving to the city and sanitation conditions are going to run into an issue and because of the sanitation conditions we will have to create new sanitary laws we're going to have to create new ways of dealing with sanitation and getting rid of garbage and dead animals in the streets and of course you also have air pollution because what are they using to heat their homes? They're using coal because well, it's coal. It's something that everybody has access to but at the same time, it's cheap to burn. And because of this, with the rise in the use of coal, you're gonna see a lot more air pollution, people getting sick and not really understanding why they're getting sick as well. You also have the idea of separate spheres of influences between men and women. This is a Victorian concept where men had the right to go out to work because that was their sphere of influence. They're supposed to be the one who is not only earning the money for the family, but they're supposed to be taking care of everybody in the family. And if they're not, they're not a proper man. And women's sphere of influence was actually just within the home. They're supposed to be raising the children. They're supposed to be taking care of the family life. They really shouldn't be outside of the home. That's their sphere of influence, and men can't tell women what to do in the house, and vice versa. Well, this is going to change at the end of the Victorian era, where women will start working. You will start to see the flapper movement in America, flapper clothes, women getting their hair cut shorter. Well, I may actually be able to catch this. Do I have balls? Yes, I do. Yay, yes. Freud. If I spell his name wrong, that's because I don't have my phone because it's charging. Actually, I'm going to change it. I have an easier name to name him. I'm just going to name him Sig after Sigmund Freud, who is the psychologist. So that's who that one is named after. Um, but you're going to have women start to go into work. You're going to have women start changing the style of dress because before that, women had to wear floor-length dresses. Their hair had to be long. They couldn't cut their hair short. Otherwise, it was seen as unseemly, and these women were subjugated to trying to act like they are supposed to in the Victorian era. Um, and I think after this battle, it's a good place to end. So I hope you guys enjoy, I didn't mean to run, but oh well. I hope you guys enjoy the series. I'm having fun doing it. Next time, 
we are going to start talking about socialism, communism, and Karl Marx. Have a great day, guys. See you later. Bye.